Let's break down exactly what the Miami Hurricanes are getting when Reese Poffenbarger arrives. You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I am Alex Dono, your host. I'm a University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet, and contributor to allhurricanes.com. Thank you so much to the everydayers for making Locked on Canes your first listen or your second listen and second watch today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts. We're free on YouTube. We're part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. This episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. Terms and conditions apply. Uh, I can't think of anyone who can help us get a better breakdown on Reese Poffenbarger than someone who has covered him extensively. Because a lot of people who haven't covered Reese and haven't really watched the guy play, are making assumptions, whether good or bad. There's a lot of assumptions being made. That's why I wanted to bring on Stone Labanowitz from FCS Nation Radio, ESPN West Palm, and the South Florida Express. And Stone, first of all, let people know if you can even count how many times you've watched Reese Poffenbarger play at Albany. Definitely not, and I think that's what I'm enjoying most. I know how Miami Hurricanes fans are. Once they get their teeth on something, they're just not going to let it go, and they're trying to break down Reese's film. I'd imagine 90% of them have no clue who plays in the CAA. Albany, if it weren't such a popular city, wouldn't know where the hell that is. Um, I've broken down so many of his game tapes. I've watched him a bunch. I've had a chance to sit down and uh, pick a lot of his teammates and coaches' brains. I like Reese's game. I think Miami fans should be excited, but could I count the amount of games that I've watched? No, probably not. <laughs> okay, so let's start with um with the strengths on Poff and Barger. Like, what what are the qualities in his game where you think, okay, th this guy's really good? A and B, it can translate from FCS into Power Five. Well, first, I'll start off with the deep ball. He's got a top two deep ball in the FCS, and I think when you first break down some of his film, it's the thing that screams at you. You don't have to be a novice or understand quarterbacks to say, damn, he's got a very nice deep ball. Two, I'd go with his footwork. I, I think he has the, I'll call it Gen Z footwork. I've been using that a lot. Some of these new kids, these young 18-year-olds in high school, their coaches are teaching a little less of the mechanics and more of the arm strength, the angles and whatnot, and he is a perfect example of that. A lot of his throws are off-platform. You can tell that his coach at Albany doesn't harp on it a lot. He kind of lets Reese go out and do what he wants. There was a quote that his head coach, Greg Cattuso, dropped, I believe, after the quarterfinal matchup when they played Villanova. He was sacked. He was wrapped up. And there was, at one point, you thought there was no way he was getting out of that. And he did get out of that. And he ended up throwing a touchdown. And that, that, that play specifically was brought up in the postgame. And his head coach, Greg Cattuso, said, hey, Cowboy's going to Cowboy. And it was just something that I think Albany fans took to, FCS fans took to. Cowboy's going to cowboy. That's a great description for Reese. And then for me, what I like the most is the ability to keep his eyes downfield. It's something that you can't really teach. I think it's personality driven. If you're super confident in your ability and the guys you have out wide and in the slot, you keep your eyes downfield because you know they're going to get open when bleep hits the fan and it's time to scramble out. It keeps his eyes up and downfield. And makes big plays. Uh, he, he lets it hang a lot of the time, depending the score line and how much time's left on the clock. So those are some things that stick out to me. But uh, like I said, eyes downfield is probably my favorite. And then the ability, the ability to throw the deep ball the way he does is just kind of ridiculous at times. Yeah, it's definitely one of the things that jumps out uh, when we watch, you know, the film that is available on him. Uh, are there any potential concerns that anyone should have about Reese, you know, making, making the jump uh, into the Power Five? Well, he got sacked 35 times this year, and that's a stat you don't like. But, of course, walking into a uh, Mario Cristobal-led team, you can be a little more confident uh, about that. If you go down Albany's O-line on his left side, 6'4", 305, and that right guard, 6'5", and that right tackle, 6'7", the other guys are like 6'1". You know, walking into Miami at 6'5", 6'6", 6'5", 6'6", 6'6". So he'll be comfortable and confident. And like I said, if you're sacked 35 times, there are things that that can do to a quarterback's game and their mental, knowing that, I'm probably going to have happy feet, seeing ghosts, all of those things a lot of FCS quarterbacks deal with because teams aren't able to construct an offensive line like Mario is. 
So I think that'll help. I think it's a weakness that'll quickly become a strength for him offensively. And then, you know, I keep seeing Miami fans talk about the kid having an it factor and all of these things. Like, I think that's what his weakness kind of is. He puts his body in harm's way all of the time. We threw the word cowboy out there. There were plenty of games watching this year where you're sitting there saying, stop doing that. Like, you don't have to do that. He's not afraid on third and distance to kind of tuck the ball and go, but he'll leave his feet. Or he'll try a spin move, and that's not really his forte. So he puts his body in harm's way. So for some, that's a weakness, and then for others, that's a strength. I see it as a strength willing to put his body in harm's way, but he's a little reckless at times. Um, And that comes with being sacked 35 times, feeling like you can't stay in the pocket. But again, it's helped him develop keeping his eyes downfield, knowing that a scramble just probably going to happen. But I I think up front he's had some problems this year, but those will be solved pretty quickly once he uh, rolls into Coral Gables. Now, here's something I got to lean on you heavily for this because you know Reese Poffenbarger better than, uh, you know, and, and anybody who covers Miami. You, you've spoken to him, you've interviewed him. Tell me about the personality. Cowboy's going to cowboy. I mean, the kid <laughs> has a smile on his face. And when he's able to throw his arm around his coach's post game, there are little things when you watch Reese where you're like, I want to be that kid's teammate. Like the smiles in the pregame, he's not one of the nervous types. His teammates love him. I mean, he's had a receiver go for over 1,000 yards. He has another FBS receiver in Julian Hicks go for about 850. I mean, he's got ball players on his team, and he's super confident. The personality, I feel like he's never shy to say how he feels. And Albany, it's not like it's a super popular market. There aren't many eyes on his games. There aren't many fans, us at FCS Nation Radio. When they were making the run to the semis, we are trying to get their fans going. But there were really no fans out there, and I say that reluctantly, but Reese was kind of the driving force for that team. So anything he said, anything he did, for me, it was watching a lot of the pregame clips, whether it was just his team's social media accounts. He's smack dab in the middle of that huddle. He's breaking down that team each and every picture or video you see, and it's something that I think comes naturally to him. So his leadership, um, his ability to have fun, I mean, like I said, you never – are not seeing a smile on his face. Kids got game. I keep seeing Canes fans tag him with gamer. I think you're absolutely allowed to do that. <laughs> now, um, here, here's uh, the most, maybe the most important question I can ask you, uh, because listen, I, I don't necessarily think Miami is done at least trying to add quarterbacks. They could go for someone like a Talia Tonga Vailoa, but if the quarterback room stays as is heading into the fall, and if Miami fans were to see, you know, an open competition between Jakari Brown. Reese Poffenbarger, Emery Williams. How would you handicap that, Stone? Who do you think would come out on top? I I don't think I have the answer to that question. I I can tell you this, though. In that meeting with Shannon, with Mario, I'd imagine, and I'd be willing to put a hefty bet on it, that he was told, this position is not yours. You're walking Mm -hmm. right into a competition. We like our guys. Our guys have played for us this season and put decent things on tape. So this is by no means your job. And I think that's what Reese wants to hear. You talk about the cowboy in him. He's like, you're telling me there's a chance. That's all I need. <laughs> that's all I need. And I think he'll go into that kind of with nothing to lose this house money mentality. And for me, who's somebody who has played in the FCS as well, we just want a shot. Just put us in the freaking game. And I think that's what Reese is asking for. If he gets enough reps and the share count is similar to the other guys, Emery coming off and injury and Curry kind of being in this weird spot with fans and the staff, I'd imagine he's going to have his shot. Can the chemistry be built in time? Can he build the relationships with the guys that Emory and Curry already have? And, and maybe to his little brother, when he gets in there, he won't have the relationships either. I, I can't handicap it though. I'm not willing to say that he has that 33% chance as the other guys do. I'd imagine his is a little smaller, but you give the cowboy a chance, I think he can make something shake. Fantastic. And, and listen, this is tremendous insight. Insight. You guys want to follow Stone at Labanowitz Stone on X. And Stone, I think people would love to hear more from you. So let, let them know when and where they can find you on ESPN West Palm and FCS Nation Radio. Yeah, FCS Nation Radio 1 on X, on Twitter, whatever the hell we call it nowadays. We break down the FCS. We just got back from Frisco, Texas. South Dakota State won the national championship. I am. Ten toes deep into the FCS. I think this transfer portal thing, a lot of people who cover the FCS are upset about it. Coaches aren't able to develop their players and whatnot. I think it's cool when you speak to some of the coaches 
they are using it as an opportunity to put these kids in a better spot in their lives than they were prior. If you're telling me a kid like Reese can play in front of X amount of fans, but now has a chance to make a little bit of money, play in four or five times the fans, and play in a conference like the ACC, these players who would have dreamt of doing that coming out of high school, they didn't have the opportunity to do that in the FCS. It makes all the difference in the world. So I'm totally hip with what's going on in uh, the FCS, and we're calling it the new era. I'm, it's kind of circular in all conferences, all divisions. So I cover the FCS. I love it. Just, like I said, I just got back from Frisco. The team who won the national championship beat Reese Poffenbarger pretty badly in the semis, yeah. 59 to 0. Um, also at ESPN West Palm Beach, man, I love my family here. I'm on a show daily. I know you know who Ken Lavica is. Sure 12 do. to 2, five days a week. We're chopping up. Eric Spolster got paid a little earlier today. So we got two hours, I'm sure, on some SPO. Uh, yeah, at Lebano at Stone on Twitter, at FCS Nation Radio 1 on Twitter as well, and at ESPN West Palm. That's where you can find everything that I got going on, man. I love it. And, and tell KLV I say hello. I love that dude. He's a great guy as well. I mean, he's one of the best dudes. I <laughs> love it. Stone Labanowitz. Make sure you guys follow him. Thank you so much for making this episode of Locked on Canes part of your day. We'll talk to you guys again next time on another episode right here on the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day.